show and tell because mixed media is too difficult to, it doesn't dry. Okay, it takes days to dry. So that's why I have several projects going on at the same time. So I started doing watercolor 30 years ago, then I had kids and ended up moving to this area and started taking classes at the Fine Arts Center with Tony Hutfeld, who so teaches experimental water media. So I learned all of these different things to do, but I didn't ever know how to put them all together. So this is pretty much a conglomeration of everything. Um, so we learned how to do um, coffee filters. So there's a coffee filter in there. We did foil. We imprinted it on it and painted it. We added found items. Those are washers. So collage can collage is wonderful because I can take a painting that I don't like anymore and make it in my background and add things to it. It's a continual layer, layering, layering of everything. And I have a, I just moved back into Sterling and I have my own studio and some guy came by the other day and he goes, what do you do if you have a painting and it doesn't turn out very well? He goes, do you paint over it or do you scrap it or what? I said, well, this was four different paintings. <laughs> I started out, it was bluebells in Texas, and then it became a cowboy hat, then I came to Florida, it became a sunrise, and it wanted to be flowers. So this piece here is an example of many mixed mediums. So there is plaster, there's molding paste on here, there's paper mache, these are paper mache balloon that I covered and then made them into faces. This is tissue. These are the cut parts from the paper mache. And this is modeling clay and paper clay. And is that on a board or is that on canvas? It's on canvas. So that it's still, even though you've got that big hard center, yep. it's still good enough to... You know, it holds it very that. well, yes. And that was part of my experiment as well. And the other thing about collage is that you can do it on wood, on the wood boards. You can do it on illustration board. That's what this is. You can use many different substrates, canvas and watercolor paper. When you're doing something of that size with, with that paper mache on the canvas, what's your what's your uh, adhesive? I used modeling paste and glue. And so the modeling paste, that's what I was going to show you on here because I did this as an example as well. So on a smaller piece, this is a canvas board. And these were pieces that I trimmed off from this. So I made the rays onto there, but one fell off this morning because I've been taking it around a lot. So um, you can either use newspaper, like regular paper mache, and on these handouts I have recipes. And I did take, I don't know if anybody of you know Joyce Curvin that does the most beautiful, wonderful paper mache dogs oh, and yeah. birds. They're so great. Yeah. But that's her recipe for paper mache. And then paper clay is something I've kind of run across in the last six months or so. It dries hard as a rock. This is paper clay. So that recipe is on there also. It's, it's a bit tedious to make. And these are paper clay balls. This is a paper clay bowl. And it's, I had painted it, I didn't like the way it looked, so I decided to put some paper around it. So I'm still playing with this piece. But it's so hard, it's just amazing. And it's made with joint compound. <laughs> so you use toilet paper and soak it in water and strain it and put joint compound and glue and mix it all up like dough and then it becomes you can do a lot of cool things with it it just has a different texture and it's harder than air dried clay so 
they're just fun things to experiment with. I have to get my notes. So the other thing that I learned in Tony's class was how to make my own stamps. So she provided these really cool little things. So I've done a few things with this stamp was from a painting I did from another workshop where I did backgrounds, <laughs> then made the stamp. And this is just a photo print because I sold this piece. But this was the stamp in gold that I did on here. So I was going to do that on here again. So. Is the stamp a sponge? No, they're styrofoam, and these are a lot denser. And I believe she ordered them um, so you carve into them. This, these are thin styrofoam, so literally make your own designs, you know, so it's not you're not um, using somebody else's stamp. So what I was going to oh, and this, uh, if you go on. Pinterest or YouTube or anything and look up paper mache, they have wonderful ideas for making bowls. So I had made these paper clay bowls, balls and set it on the bottom and it, I kind of like it's a little off. But you can put anything on the outside of this and get them stronger. You can add tissue like I did to that one or paint them. And if you use, there were some that if you use um, print, like book print pages mm -hmm. for your first layer, they would be in the inside of the thing. So whatever you put on your first layer of your balloon becomes the thing, the, what you see on the inside. So those were cool. So what I was going to do, oh, so going from watercolor to adding collage, adding tissues, just and adding more and then getting to paper mache and then adding the features on with paper clay or air dry clay. And then just, is anybody, did you do paper mache or paper mache, <laughs> paper mache? Yeah, so I did a uh, demo last month with just balling up newspaper. So all this is, this one needs to be finished. All this is, is two balled up pieces of newspaper taped together and a piece of cardboard on the back. So it's so simple and so fun. And then you can go into, you can use it for so many other things, which is so nice. And then this is another form of these are just different things that I have done. This is a photo transfer. This piece here, if, where you use a photo and you make a toner copy of it and put layers of um, gloss medium or matte medium on them and then glue them on. So that's photo transfer and that's on. There's some tar gel on there, which dries real clear. All these mediums are so great to work with. They're all listed on here. These are dried leaves that are glued down, they're um, gessoed over, and then repainted out. And I've, I've done a lot of those big, bigger pieces with palm leaves, and I have a great big sago leaf palm that I did that turned out really great. It's just a fun thing that I really enjoy doing. These are mixed between uh, those little things you find in the scrapbook pages, this magazine, the gears, a, hub, a bottle cap, and it says you must be bored <laughs> inside the cap. So I like to look for things like that. And, and you're not using glue to put those on? You're using the... No, these I use a heavy glue or um, a heavy gel, okay. like a gel medium, the thick things to hold these these stronger things on. And then I also like to do shadow boxes. So there's a, a man whose book I bought, uh, Joseph Cornell, that did 
did them from things he found in New York City on the streets, and they're really great. So I try to do odd pieces <laughs> like that. Anyway, so I was going to try to piece this on. Oh, and then I also have several boxes of collections of papers and magazines and stamps and all kinds of things. Wait a minute, your studio has lots of boxes of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I do mixed media. Uh, I know you got yes. lots of boxes of lots <laughs> I of do, I do. Because you collect everything and don't yes. throw anything else. It's so hard. I said I know. I find a bottle cap that has yes. writing on it. I have to have it because I'm going to use it someday. You're yes. going to use it in the future at some time. So over the weekend I had to help some people do a project that Joy was supposed to do, bless her heart, and we were trying to make Saturn rings. And I went in my back room and looked at my pile of stuff, and I had to be very careful taking these out. But from the dollar store I had picked up several months ago, they're little teeny tiny styrofoam balls. They're like maybe sixteenth of an inch, they're very tiny. I mix them with um, matte medium, white paint, iridescent medium, and they made the greatest, most beautiful rings around Saturn you've ever seen. <laughs> it's so cool. They are styrofoam though, but just different ideas and thoughts. And this is similar to glass bead, which is probably more um, pH. Yeah, well, yeah, and expensive. So I put that on here last night. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has a great texture, too. Oh, yeah. I know you have to see it in the light. And this is a piece of sheer gold stuff I had that I put over a magazine picture. So, And this is modeling paste. It hasn't been painted over yet. So there's just, if you want to see, just different textures and things you can do. So my pieces take a life of their own. They may start out as one thing and become something else. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> and this, I keep thinking it's too big for this, and I want to put it on a bigger piece. Um, also, plaster strips. This I put over, these you can buy like this, and you put it over a form, and you get it wet, and it blends together and adheres and I have a project in mind for this. I'm going to put it on a canvas like that. So there's so many things you can make 3D out of. And where can you buy the plaster wrap? This, I got my first one at Michael's but I think they don't sell this anymore. So you know they've become more kind of commercialized. Yeah. Uh, you could probably order it. It's just called plaster wrap. But you can put it on any kind of a form. You do have to put cellophane under it or saran wrap or something so that you can get it off. But I have a body form, too, I'm going to cover <laughs> with this and then put it on a, a big canvas. So, so other than that, um, all these... Joint compound is a construction tool. No. Oh, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, I was wondering about the, this is, has, has a sheen to it. What, right. What is it? That's the glass beads. Wow. Oh, cool. So we want to see all the products. I know. That's, and that's really all I can really do because they're just yeah. so great and how they work. You can see them in there a little bit. Oh, oh you've mixed it in already. No, this, it comes this way. I had a whole jar. Just yes, glass I have too. I think I need a wood glass is where I first noticed those. Isn't it great? So I just, this was a coffee filter there that I had colored, and I just stuck it on there, and then I ran the glass beads, and I put some more up there, but you can feel how they come out. So, I know, there's, it's just 
you go into Michael's and they actually have a list and they show all the different textures you can get from everything. There's crackle paste. I did a whole frame. I did a uh, big octopus, but I painted a frame around it and I put crackle paste on it. It's so great, yeah. So it made it look like an actual frame. So this dries when it it's white because it's a paste. It goes on um, opaque. And when it dries, it crackles up, so you can paint a dark color over top, and it goes into the cracks and a lighter color on top of that so that it, you can see the cracks in it. So, and tar gel, string gel, that's what's on these circles. They dry real hard, clear, hard, almost like resin. Yeah, it's, this is called... There's tar gel and string gel. It's the same product, but I think they call this string gel, so you tend to string it. You know, you can. But I've used it. I've used it straight too. Yeah, and it's another clear, but it takes a day or so to dry. Okay. And it dries solid hard. Wow. Now with the crackling, do you need to put that on thicker? For it to work? Right. This right. And I don't know. Maybe. Like if you put a real thin coat, it doesn't really work, does it? It. You have to play with it. I would put it like a quarter, a little less than a quarter inch. I wouldn't do it that thick. Yeah, because that's like. Right. So and you can practice to see which crackles more because, right, the thinner you do it, you get a different crackle than the thicker. So do spare ends first. Yeah. Yeah. So, but this is um, this is less expensive than the modeling paste, and you can sand it and you can stamp into it forms. So for a while, I go on different sprees and use different things. Do you use it the same way as modeling paste? You can. Um, Sometimes I don't like the way the paints absorb into them because they get a pasty look to them. But but it's kind of neat when you paint over them and then you sand off the tops so then you get a white, you know, thing through it. And it dries a little grayer than the paste does. But it is less expensive. I don't think I have anything here with... I wonder if you put a seal over it and then paint it in. The, probably would help. It wouldn't absorb into it as much. Yeah. yeah. But again, it takes a long time to dry. I thought I had a knife in here. There it is. So it comes out. It's almost like spackling. So you can use it and spread it on. So it goes on like paste. And you can, you know, put lines in it and stamp circles into it, and it just gives a nice background texture to things. How long does that stay viable? You've got airspace like that. I've had, I just saw a piece in my friend's house that, that the other day that I probably did. No, I meant inside your Oh, in here? Yeah. 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 Uh, this is a newer one because the last one I had that was probably six, seven years old started to turn a little odd. Yeah, yeah, seven years. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like five dollars for this much, so you don't use a whole lot. Where the paste is, well, this is the yeah molding paste. This is like seventeen dollars. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, coupons, coupons, but. It's all so much fun to use. And how do you make the palm tree on that painting? That's, this is the, um, I didn't bring a sample of it because the last batch I made, this is the paper clay. Oh, okay. It's That's on this. With the toilet paper. Yes. Wow. And these were just samples. I was just experimenting to see how they would work on the uh, canvas. And I can't even get them off it. Wow. Uh, they're, they're solidly adhered.
the pan if you did with your homemade paste. The home, the homemade paper, paper. clay. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. So it's solid as can be. That's nice. like the bowl. So I'll pass it around. Just be careful. That's the wet. Okay. Um, joint compound. Wow. But it's. It's really good. It's a it's interesting. It's it's actually kind of a fun thing to do because you think it's you take a whole roll of toilet paper and dump it in water and let it come apart and then you strain it and then you add so they use those little mixers those little um, with the little blades on them yeah I had to go to uh, I used to store to find one again after of course I got rid of mine a long time ago and, uh, but that seems to work the best because it mixes it up but you mix it like dough and then you, you can add um, there is some flour in it I believe some use cornstarch. There's a lot of different recipes online. But this is the one I found that I like the best. And they put mineral oil or baby oil in it. And the salt in the paper mache. So some people are worried about things molding when you use flour. So um, salt and the mineral oil tends to help that from happening, so. So with the paper clay, and you've got the flour and the cornstarch, have you had any trouble with that molding once it's dry? No, so I've done it actually, and I had them all, I was, I put them all in little cups for the last mm -hmm. demo that I did, and um, they're still, still clear, and I made it a long time ago. Well, it's, I mean, once you've made your piece. Oh, see, oh the, yeah, no, the, no. I remember what we used to do, the salt dough, you know, right. creatures and that, and I, I, I moved from British Columbia to Florida, and I put my lovely little lady on the side of my, my kitchen cupboard, and yeah, it absorbed, <laughs> it absorbed moisture, and, and it started to, to get soft. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you don't seal, if you, if you, right. like there, all I did was seal the front after it had been dried or baked or whatever, yeah. but I didn't seal the back. But so in yes. Florida, that didn't work at all. Yes. <laughs> That's, and the, well, this is less, for the paper mache is less salt. Um, it's just a sprinkle just to keep mold out of it. It's mostly flour. But yeah, you know, it can't be exposed to humidity. And even this piece, I, I'm watching closely mm -hmm. to see how it, it acts. And it's, it's three, four months old. But I did also coat it with a matte and a gloss medium, too. So I think that holds it all in pretty well. You had that hanging in Sterling. Yes, I just put it up. Yes, I had it in the last show. And then I'm, I've got it now outside my new studio. So, yeah. Do you use a spray acrylic, or do you brush it on? I brush it on. I use the, um, the Liquitex. Uh, gloss medium. So this is matte medium I use to glue things down with. I usually use a layer of, I put, put it underneath and on top, like the papers, wherever this piece is. Like these, I put it under and on top. And it's not a shiny finish. And you can use the gloss also, but it will be shiny. bit of paste on here and see if I can stick this. So this piece, I know Tuesday you saw this piece, the other one. So I haven't done anything with it because I keep thinking it needs to go on a bigger um, bigger canvas. But then I kind of like it on this too. So just a little bit of molding paste. It holds it Right there. So this is how I'm trying to decide whether I think oh it would gosh. be okay. This is well, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing what I'm but, but because because that's right with your if you if yeah. you had a mat or you'd have to have a nice thick frame as opposed to a mat and seal the whole thing. Well, right, right. And I don't usually use glass. 
No. Anyway, because no. I, I just, uh, I'm tactile. Mm -hmm. So it's like I want to touch it. I want everybody else to touch it. <laughs> so, so, and then I, st I started to put, this is air dry clay that I put features on here, but they've broken off as they've been knocking it around. So I'll probably just take it all off and start over with something and may not even do features on it. And you just modeled that air dry clay with your finger? Yeah, yeah. And you can do the same with the paper clay. It models the same way, although it has fibers in it. So it doesn't quite get as smooth. So you have to really play with that a little bit. But it's so much harder. So that's cool. So then, so I just kind of threw this paint on. So to be similar here. Then I get ahead of myself, so of course I put this on and painted behind it before I finish. So. <laughs> but you can just kind of see how it'll end up. This one's got to dry. So my other reason for liking mixed media is because I have to have several pieces going while one dries. Because this I can't do anything with until that's finished. But but I'll play around. And I've got some glass bead on there also. But you can see where the paint kind of dulled it down a little bit. So I like the shiny on this piece. So I probably won't put anything over that at all. So I like that look. But then again, then I, have, then I can just go around and find where I want it to be. You know? Gotta love a mat, don't you? <laughs> Did you use that kind of mat with just a regular frame uh, so that I always think that mat in time will become discolored or pick up a lot of dirt? Do you think? Have you, ever, have you ever sealed your mat and then just put it in your frame with those glass? And that would you that really would just leave that mat uncovered. I mean, of course you can't put glass over that. We yeah. just talked about that. Yes, that's true. Um, I'm trying to think what I, if I have anything that's... You could mat it and sell it with just the mat, that kind of a mat. Well... But I'll, and it works. I always thought that they would get too dirty or something. Well, they should all be. They're all pH, I mean, acid. What is it? If you've ever gone to an estate sale in Florida, which I obviously I live in a senior community, and I'm out there doing it all the time, and I'm picking up um, frames and art, artwork from mm -hmm. other people's homes that have been sitting on their walls, yeah. and invariably. The mats and everything is is molded. Right, right. So even under the glass and properly, right. you know, papered and right. sealed from that's that. That's true. That's true. So I my question to even just you know people who paint on canvas as well because the canvases will do mold on the back. Has anybody sealed their canvas at the back to stop that from from happening? Mm -hmm. Well, we're probably dead before that happens. That's, well, no, I was just I, thinking, I, I, that's many not years. Not really, not yeah. really, because I've had there. I've got a few paintings that have been in yes. behind and sitting on the yes. floor, and I picked one up to take to only your name the place the other yes. a month or so ago, and I looked at the back and then I thought, so I quickly wow. with a brush and I tried to you know to clean it, clean it, clean it, and I finally just took some some. Um, well, sealer, you know, and some white, and, and I and I painted the back of my canvas because so it was just mold kills on the back and then gesso it. I I actually tried bleach on the back of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I stuck it out in the how sun. How old was your yeah, piece? Mm -hmm. How old was your piece? Mm -hmm. uh, probably mm, was six, six years old. Or One of years? Years. Yes. 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 What did you use acrylics or? It was acrylic. I don't the think front, I've the front was acrylic and the the, the, un, the untreated canvas back. Mm -hmm. If you turn it over, I could see the mold spots. Wow. Yes, I've seen that in my storage mm -hmm. shed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, but, I mean, I, and it probably I have right. an air conditioned house and blah blah blah. So that's odd. Yeah, because yeah. all the years I've never yeah. seen that on. But I mean, house. every every home that I've gotten to where I where I picked up pieces that I'm gonna either paint over or do something with, they they've had 
They've wow. had them on their walls, and they've gone molded. Wow. Yeah. I, haven't, I don't think I've seen that. I haven't seen it on mine, but I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. <clears throat> Are there any other questions or anybody want to look at anything? Have you yes. found that's the easiest way to store your stuff is in clear boxes? <laughs> yes. I love these boxes. Every time they're on sale, I grab one because I can kind of see basically an idea of what I have in there, like tissues. I'll keep one with just tissues in and one with just, you know, magazine pieces or things that I've created, you know. So I have probably four or five of these boxes. And, um, yeah, I've tried many different systems. I've tried the clear envelopes, but they're just a pain getting in and out of. I've tried a file system. So these seem to work okay so far. <laughs> yeah, I just bought two shelves that I think, you know, they came apart at Michael's. They're 50% off because yes. of their storage shelf yeah. and they're on wheels. Wow. They have seven shelves in them and then these slip right in. Oh. oh. I just, I mean, I feel so full at this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. No, I just got the three tiered one with the bucket type things in mm -hmm. it for the studio. Yeah. It's the wow. storage. It's all about storage. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. I know I've tried the photo boxes, you know, but I don't know what's in them. No, I have boxes too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Hard. It's a hard thing to not do. It's like a disease. <laughs> I didn't see your name or your contact information. Uh oh, on the sheet, I'm sorry. So, and I um, didn't even bring cards. I was kind of in a hurry. I, I work a different and job. I probably was talking while you, you were interviewing. <laughs> Wendy. Wendy, Wendy Davis. Davis. Thank you. And I'm, do you know Sterling Studios? Yes. I'm there now in Thank Studio you. 6. You'll, you'll know by that piece out front. Of course. Yeah, great. Let's see. This was a coffee cup. Oh, but it's got this wonderful texture on it. <laughs> so, you know, you can also use it for stamping. So, wow. that's... Nothing to offer. No, yeah, this is this... That makes me... It is, and it's, it's, a, it's good and it's bad. It is bad. Because <laughs> there's, like, no end to it. You're the devil. You don't throw anything out because yeah. it has, you can do something with it. Uh, this is something a friend of mine did with my face on it. No. Oh. <laughs> Do all mixed meter artists eventually have to live alone? Yeah, I know. How do you get around the house? Well, they have to move out and get a studio. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I'm just thinking that she gets to have her own house. In fact, this was, it's a coaster from the Yard House in Texas, which is a beer restaurant. So I used this piece, I, I had two of them, and I cut this face out, and I put it on, um, I had three mixed media pieces, and it was a woman, I had a screen across her face, and I had this little guy down in the corner kind of looking at her. Somebody bought it, I says, right during the Me Too movement. Because <laughs> so, wow. he was creepy, and she had the screen over her face. Wow. This, somebody bought it. I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs>